Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Garrett Harding and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you how to make muzzle flashes inside of DaVinci Resolve. This is a great technique to know how to do if you're looking to make an action film or anything involving muzzle flashes. That being said, this video does not in any way condone any kind of violence. So without any further ado, make sure you subscribed, make sure you've clicked that bell, and let's jump into the video. Here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve. What we're gonna do now that we're here is go ahead and take this clip, bang, of me holding an airsoft gun. Other than the orange tip and the obviously plastic slide and frame, we're gonna make this look like a real gun. But the first thing we're gonna look at is actually creating the muzzle flash itself, which we can do entirely inside of Fusion. Let's go ahead and add a Fusion composition so we can jump in there and get started. What you're gonna need to do is come up to effects, click on it, and then grab out of effects your fusion composition drag it on out here and then we're going to pop into fusion and we're going to start to edit this thing so now that we're here inside of fusion we're going to go ahead and grab a fast noise node that's what we're going to use to build both the flash and the smoke that come after the flash go ahead and grab one of those fast noise you don't want the texture just the noise so boop add that in Go ahead and root that into your media out and you'll see that we kind of get something that doesn't look at all like a muzzle flash. What we're going to do for that is come on over into our inspector. Make sure that you have this open. Just click on inspector up top here. And then we're going to increase the detail. We're going to increase the scale. And then we're going to pop on over into colors. And we're going to go red and we're going to go yellow. Fiery. And then we're going to go ahead and grab a spline mask with this little curved line here with the two dots above it. Go ahead and grab that, then select that, and for this, click invert. And now we are going to go ahead and draw yoop, our muzzle flash. This one is going to be pretty exaggerated, pretty crazy looking just so that it's very visible, but you make it whatever shape you need yours to be to look correct for your specific gun. If you need to find those, just Google it. You can find muzzle flashes for just about every gun, then you can draw them and you're good to go. We are gonna soften that edge up a bit. We're gonna say that in the middle, it kinda comes out a bit. It's got a little bit of a lump in this one. Don't know why, but it does. Now we have that. And we are going to go to the very beginning, click on our mask, and go to level, and keyframe that at zero. And now, we're going to slip in between two frames of our footage. We're going to go to frame 1.5. And you can see, we are between frames 1 and 2. Pretty cool. And now, we're going to make our level all the way up, so it's not instant, but it's expansion is fast so if we go back a frame it's almost gone and then back one more and it is gone so it comes in but it comes in like mm, super quick and then on frame two we're gonna have it go away level back down to zero so if we were to watch this back it would be like there gone and somewhere in between here and gone it gets brighter now what we're going to do, now that we have that, is go back into edit, figure out where we want that flash to start. So we've got squeeze the trigger. Let me actually make this bigger for you guys. So we've got squeeze the trigger, and then once we get where we're going with it, it eventually, holy crap, too many frames. Okay, there we go. So we get that squeeze and then we get bang, and it starts. So that's where we are gonna start this. Actually, we're gonna start at one frame before. So if we watch this now, we get the squeeze, bang. And that looks okay, but we're not quite there yet, obviously. So we take our fusion composition, we open our inspector back up, and we go ahead and move this to a spot that makes sense for our actual shot and this looks way too tall for me so i'm going to go ahead and unlink my x and my y scale here 
and I'm gonna shrink it down on the Y so it looks more like that. I think that looks pretty good. It's about twice the length of the pistol, which might sound huge, but that's actually like pretty normal. If you want to see a video about that, look up Muzzle Flashes and Corridor Digital because they have a great video talking about like the physics and the size and everything when it comes to Muzzle Flash. So if we watch that now, it probably looks a lot better. Bang. That looks much better already. What we're going to do next is create the light that this explosion would cast. But to do that, we're going to select our background clip, our clip with the actual gun in it, because it's going to have all the other stuff going on if you don't shoot on a black background like this. We're going to pop on over into color. In the colors panel, we're going to go ahead and make sure, again, double check that your correct clip is selected, and then right click on this node if you don't have these. Click on nodes up in the top right. Right click it, go to add node, then go to add serial, and we're gonna use this one, because if we build a mask on top of this one, you're not gonna be able to see anything else. So we're gonna build the mask in our second node here. We're gonna click on our power windows. Once we have power windows open, we're gonna find where it is that this happens. We want this to be right with the explosion. So we're gonna draw it the frame before, and we're just going to do a blob. You put this on whatever you need to put it on. Really, really think, though, about what would be lit up by your flash. Because that is going to help to differentiate a crappy muzzle flash from one that looks real and that look from one that looks real and looks really good. So, inside of this big bubble here, which is admittedly probably too large, but this is for example purposes, we're going to go ahead and push that toward orange and we are gonna make it brighter. And now that this looks how we want it to look, we're gonna go ahead and keyframe right here. Uh, it's on corrector two, in case you wanna be specific. And then we're just gonna make a little bit of a wiggle. And now if we go back a frame, just like that, we're gonna double click the B, we're gonna double click the G, and we're gonna double click the R in the offset wheel that we made the light effect with. And if we pop forward, hmm. If we pop forward, there should be a light effect, but we are just gonna go ahead and rebuild that. Make it brighter, and then we're gonna pop forward again, and it's gonna go away. There we go. So now, one frame before, it's not there, and then once it's there, we've got a bright light, which needs to be less orange, I think. A little orange, not too orange. And then on the next frame, gone. But if we look at this without the mask selected, so if we just open up our curves here, you'll see that it looks really, really horrible. So we'll pop back in here, and then next to where we grabbed our pen tool before, we're gonna grab our soft and just turn that like to seven. Now if we go back, you see it's a lot easier on the eyes. The more fade you want there, the softer you go. So just turn it up to 26. This is what we get. Looks a lot more like light. And you can get as fancy as you want with this, adding like lens flares and whatnot. But for this, this is what we're doing. So if we watch that again now, bang, that looks pretty good. It's missing a very, very crucial thing though. And that is the sound effects. That's right, good job. So I have grabbed one from the internet. I'm gonna grab that right now. So now we're gonna drag in this sound effect to right where that thing blasts, which is right there. And we're gonna pop that in and see if it looks good. If it doesn't, we'll tweak it, but let's check. That looks pretty good. So if you watch the squeeze, and then it shoots, and it shoots right with the recoil. So if we hit Shift K, we can play it back in slow motion, and that'll help to see if anything needs to be tweaked. Uh, honestly, pretty good. That's all you need to do to create your muzzle flash, but then after that, we're gonna make smoke. In order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and grab another fusion composition, and then we're gonna go back into fusion, but this time, I'm gonna pull up clips up in the top left. 
We're gonna go back to our first one. Oh, actually, while we're here, something I forgot to tell you before. So, like, kudos to you if you're still watching because you get info that they don't. What we want to do is in our main fast noise window here. So, not colors, but the main one. We're gonna go ahead and make a seethe keyframe. And then we're gonna go somewhere past where our things are happening. And then we're gonna move to a point where our stuff is done. It doesn't exist anymore. And then we're gonna turn that seethe up to like two or three, depending on how far you go. And what this is gonna do is while it's there for its brief moment that it's alive, it's going to be moving. So if we'd move that seethe dial, we can see what's going on as our stuff moves. So we'll reset that. Now that we've added our seethe, which is gonna really just mm, cherry on top kind of a deal, we're gonna copy our mask and our fast noise control C on Windows and then we're gonna go ahead and control V or paste that right into our new fusion composition we're gonna drag that right there we're gonna pop into fast noise go back into our colors and we are going to make white and we're going to make black both of which pretty see-through so if we go back to the beginning when we can actually see this we are gonna get into our spline here and delete all of these levels keyframes get to the beginning set our level to full now we'll pop back into our noise and then maybe like mess with the opacity on the whites see what you're working with and then once it's looking like smoke go ahead and pop back into your regular stuff and then we're gonna go ahead and decrease the scale just a little bit because we don't want those particles to be as fine but we're still gonna do the same thing with the seed but we're gonna get rid of the second keyframe because that'll just be too fast. It's up there for a little bit longer than the flash. It's gonna be too fast if we do it right away. So now that we only have the first part and it's at zero, we're gonna go all the way down to the end and we're gonna turn that thing way up to like three, maybe four. Let's do four and see how that goes. And then we go back to the beginning and we'll set our level keyframe at one because this one's gonna fade and we're gonna also make it grow so we get our zero and then we'll move forward say I think this was shot 30 frames so this is one second one full second and we're gonna try that first so we'll go ahead and set a new level keyframe drop that down to zero so as it stays out there it kind of dissipates just like real smoke would and then to make this look more realistic like from a muzzle flash kind of a perspective we're gonna go ahead and grab these keyframes here and then we're gonna go out to f say four and we're gonna stretch them and we're gonna grab these keyframes here and we're gonna bring them up I'm gonna do the same thing with these just the natural expansion of how whatever smoke you're using would be that's what you want to go with and it's gonna expand pretty quickly so we're gonna bring it up to then 10 and we're gonna expand these front ones out even further and we're gonna expand these top ones out, up even further and the bottom ones same deal we just want this spread to look realistic and bring these down we'll bring that whole situation on down bring this whole situation on up some more and then one final one around 20 everything's pretty uh pretty faded at this point but we're just gonna make it you know bigger because this smoke it just grows and bring those out cut these in half bring these down because you know they're gonna expand and then if we go back to the beginning and watch that boom we get that big expansion we'll pop back into the edit window and we'll watch this frame by frame you'll see that it grows we might need to make that go away quite a bit faster but we need to get these together and while the muzzle flash is happening, you won't see the smoke. While the muzzle flash is happening, you won't see the smoke because the fuel that is there is being burned. So there's nothing like, no particulates in the air yet. So as we bring, oop, oh, we're gonna hit undo on that. Make sure you have the correct one select. We're gonna go ahead and drag that over so that it is with our muzzle flash and looks pretty close to the same or exactly the same pretty good 
And then we're going to move that just a frame out. Snapping's on, so that's easy enough to do. And don't stick either of these to the barrel of the gun. Once they're shot, that's where they are. So if we stuck it to the gun and it carried up with it, that would look really bad. You don't want to do that. It looks horribly unprofessional. So once it's where it is, let it stay. If we go forward a frame, that all turns into smoke. That checks out. And then as we move forward, it expands and then eventually goes away. So we will go ahead and just yeah, that looks like it's happening in super slow motion. So we'll grab this back in Fusion, and we're gonna keep our size increase the same with our different points, but what we're gonna do is move this frame 30 keyframe where it gets to zero way up. So we're gonna drag that down, and then we're gonna go back to our points where we have expansion happening, and we're just gonna make those happen a bit faster. So we're gonna take these keyframes, we're gonna move them on up, and we're going to take these keyframes and move them on down. And then we're going to move this out this way more quickly. And then we're going to move these on up. We're just going to kind of round it out. Let the smoke expand how it would expand. And then see if we're in the correct speed now. Back in the edit page, we're going to watch this back again. Still looking way too slow. We're going to bring that smoke down to like two frames before it disappears because this is getting kind of crazy. So we still will have our expansion happening. We can see that. So at two, we're going to bring that down to zero. We're going to see how this looks. It might look horrible. It might look good. Once this red bar turns blue, we'll go ahead and watch this back. And I think our effect is finished. Bar is blue. Let's give it a go. So work on that smoke until it looks right for your gun, your preference, all that. Now you have the tools to go out, make your own muzzle flashes, custom, however, whatever colors you want, all of it. You're fully customizable. You don't have to use somebody else's. And this is how you line them up with your footage and make the smoke to go afterward. The more research you do about what your muzzle flash should look like and the more time you spend into making it look like that, the better this is going to look in your final project. So spend your time because it does make a big difference. If you're still around, I would love to know why you watch my videos. Are you exclusively an editor? Are you an aspiring filmmaker? Are you an aspiring YouTuber? Maybe you want to make just documentaries. Whatever you're doing, Please let me know in the comments down below because I want to use this to kind of help guide what kind of content I make for you guys because I want to make sure that it stays helpful. We're not going to move away from DaVinci, but I'm thinking about adding a couple of extra things here and there. So please let me know why you watch these videos down in the comments section below and I will see you next Thursday.